Man, what a great time of worship. Amen. I'm so glad that you joined us and glad for those who are watching us on the live stream. And man, I, I hope that you enjoyed worshiping uh, this morning, just like I hope that you enjoyed uh, celebrating freedom uh, this weekend. And that I hope that you had a great time with friends and family. And man, what an honor it is to know that we're free. Amen. That we're free as a nation, but we're free as a people. And we are free because of what Jesus Christ has done for us. And I'm glad that you wanted to come this morning and join us here even on live stream and, and worship today because we celebrated yesterday. I hope we didn't celebrate too much yesterday that we can't celebrate today. Amen. So that we're celebrating actually what we really need to celebrate. And, and I appreciate what Keith said in his prayer about uh, having all that we need in Jesus because he's all that we have, but hey, praise the Lord, he's all we need, amen? We don't need anything past him. Today what I want to do is I want to continue with the idea of celebrating our nation, celebrating our God, by a sermon entitled, Celebrating Greatness. Because that's what we're doing, amen? We celebrate greatness. We celebrate greatness of our nation, but yet we celebrate because of, the, of our nation. We can celebrate the greatness of our God, because my friends, can I tell you today, the greatness of God is what makes America great. It's the greatness of God that makes the First Baptist West great. It's the greatness of God that makes uh, each family in here and each one watching at home great. It's the greatness of God that makes each individual great. So celebrating greatness today. I want you to take your Bibles and turn to the book of Psalm chapter 78. We're going to be looking at something very important about this idea of celebrating greatness, of how we're supposed to be passing this down and letting people know about our greatness. Psalm 78, starting at verse 1. Let's go ahead and stand in honor of reading God's Word uh, this morning. The Bible tells us in, in verse 1, Give ear, O my people, to my law. Incline your ears to the words of my mouth. I will open my mouth in a parable. I will utter dark sayings of old, which we have heard and known. And our fathers have told us we will not hide them from their children, telling the generation to come the praises of the Lord and his strength and his wonderful works that he has done. Father, we thank you for today. Thank you for allowing us to have celebrated this whole weekend the greatness of our nation. And Father, I pray that as we continue on with that thought today, that we would understand, Lord, that you are the only reason we're great because you are a great God. And Father, I pray that, that we would not forever forget that. But God, then we would not fail to share that greatness with people and the reason for our greatness. God, we would not hide it under a bushel but Father, we would heed your words and we would give ear to your, to your word. And then, Lord, we would be doers of your word as well. We thank you for your word today. And I pray, Father, that the words that I say today will be your words and not mine. I pray that this is your message and not my message. And Father, I pray that the response would be as you desire for it to be. And it's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Thank you. Go ahead and be seated. You know, we have a wonderful nation, and we've just been celebrating the, the, the birth of it. And I see there's been nothing wrong with us honoring our nation, honoring those who have gone before us. But something that I feel that we are losing, or perhaps may have even lost, is the importance of something special, and that's our nation's history. I think somewhere along the line we're losing that. Now listen, don't begin to shut off and start saying, well, there he goes. He's talking about all the stuff going on in the... No, I'm, I'm not. I'm, that's what I'm talking about. I think we, we get so wrapped up in stuff that we forget the reality of what is. My friends, listen to me. We have a great nation. I shared that with you last week. I am unashamedly saying I believe America is great. I believe we're great not because of all of our resources and all of our people and all of our strength and all of our ingenuity. I believe we are great because God is great. I believe that we are great because God has blessed America. And I believe that we are great because God has worked through men and women throughout the history of our nation 
to bring us to the point that we are right now. But I feel that we're losing the importance of our nation's history. Because one thing that I want you to understand, point number one is, history is important. Amen? Knowing history. Now, I know a lot of people, that was probably one of the, uh, uh, I certainly probably the worst subject you took in school, but I, I'm, I'm a realist. I know, even though I was a math teacher, that most people would look and go, yeah, math was probably the worst subject I ever took in my life. I, right, Jane? Yeah, all my daughters will tell you, and even though I taught it. But history ranks pretty high up there, amen? That people just really don't seem to be concerned about it. But my friend, history is important, not just to keep us from repeating it. Because someone once said that if we don't know our history, we're doomed to repeat it. All right, now I believe that. But not only not knowing it to keep us from repeating it, but also to keep us doing what we've been doing that is right. Because when we don't know our history, we don't know what we did right. And if we don't know what we did right, then we don't learn and we're not going to continue it. So what I want to do today is we look in this text and the author of this, of this psalm is saying that we know that history is important, that we will continue to tell it to our children. He brought up the idea of Israel's past. Now Israel, even at this time, had, must, had done things that weren't right. But some things that they did right was, first of all, they talked about God's greatness. The author here is telling us that we need to go through and we need to continue to repeat the words. What words? They're not our words. They're not our opinions. He's not saying, Israel, continue to give your opinion of what went on. He's saying, no, you tell them the word of God. You tell them what made them great. Because, my friends, I'm here to tell you, God is great. He is the one and only God. Amen? There are no other gods before Him. There are no other real gods. Everything else is just made up, make-believe. And He said, understand to let the people know that God is a great God. We need to understand it, that even in our past, we need to know that we have acknowledged God's greatness. But not only understand God's greatness, but also God's power. It is God's power that makes the nations great. It is God working through the hearts and minds of people that make a nation great. Because, my friends, God has ultimate power. He is the creator of the heavens and the earth. He speaks and things come into existence. He speaks and things go out of existence. He speaks and all oceans move. God is a powerful God and he who serves God receives God's power. Do you understand then that if God is a powerful God and we receive him into our lives through Jesus Christ that we become a powerful people? Now, I'm not talking about powerful in might and strength, but we are powerful because of the Word of God. God's Word working through us, man. That same God who spoke the world into existence and spoke, spoke Lazarus from the tomb that raised Jesus Christ, that same power now is in with us because He said, this power I now give to you. God's a powerful God, and Israel understood that. But God is also a God of love. Israel understood God's love. Now, what he was trying to get them to understand is that God is a merciful God. God is a gracious God. And it was God who made Israel great, and it is God who makes us great. He says, give ear, O my people, to my law. Incline your ears to the words of my mouth. He said, listen to what I have to tell you. Not I as the pastor, but listen to what God has to tell us. Amen? God has some good things to say to us if we will just incline our hearts to Him, if we will incline our ears to Him, if we will receive His Word into our lives on a daily basis. God has some good stuff for us, my friends. And He said, incline your ears to me. And then He says, then you take that and you move it on. Because I want to share another part with you about our history being important, is that God worked through our forefathers. Amen? That we, we understand. Now listen, as I shared in the first service, I'm not going to stand up here and tell you our forefathers were perfect. They were not perfect men. They were flawed men. 
But I also want to bring attention to you that every person in this Bible that God used in a powerful way, they were not perfect people either. They were flawed individuals. Flawed men and women that God revealed His power to them and through them, and God did some great things. So I'm here to tell you that our forefathers were not perfect. They were flawed individuals. But I believe their heart was inclined to God, and as a result, they began to listen to Him, and He spoke through them in the things that they did. In the, in the setting and establishing up this great nation, I believe our forefathers attempted to do what God wanted them to do. We must know of God's leading in our forefathers because everything we have today, listen to me, everything we have today is based on the acknowledgement of God. When we look and see their writings, we look and see the things that they said, the things that they did, the things they established, it was still based upon the Word of God. And so everything in our nation is established on the greatness of God and acknowledging Him to be God. We just talked last week about great and blessed is the nation whose God is Jehovah who has established everything that you're doing on the fact of God being Jehovah. And so we see that our forefathers did it. We see it in what they wrote. Man, if you'll take some time and read some of the things that our forefathers wrote about how God was leading them and, and the principles they were basing it on, you, couldn't, you can't help but see God working through these men. As a matter of fact, one of the greatest things I think they wrote was this. We hold these truths to be self-evident, that all men are created equal, that they are endowed by their Creator with certain inalienable rights, that among those are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. My friend, I believe that's God-inspired. Now, that's not Scripture, but I believe that's the basis of everything our nation is founded upon, God being a God who created all things. He is first the Creator. And then that he says that all men are created equal, that God has no respecter of men, that God does not separate us from black and white, God does not separate us from rich and poor, God does not separate us from male and female. He doesn't separate us that way. That all people have value, all people have worth, because I know that because when Jesus Christ died on the cross, he died for all people. So we see that in their writings, they acknowledge God being creator. They acknowledge that we have unalienable rights. Can I tell you something? And, and I prayed again today, God, please don't let me try to get my own opinions in here. And please don't let me get my frustrations out from the pulpit. I don't ever want to do that. So I prayed hard over this. But can I tell you, and, and this is from, I believe, these men, and this is also from God, that the government gives us no rights. Our rights are not established by our government. Our rights are created by our Creator, by God Himself, who has given us these unalienable rights. In other words, these are rights that cannot be disputed and cannot be taken away. Life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. This was established by God, and He breathed it, I believe, through these men as they established our nation on that. So our government, listen to me, our government has no rights to give us. It's only God. So we see that they established that. That He gave us rights. And the, the, the one of those rights is life. Man, listen to me, we... We can't legislate life, folks. The government's trying to legislate life. We sometimes try to legislate life. Do you realize life is not given by the government? Life is not given by us? Life is given by God. We see that He has also given us liberty. The government cannot give us liberty. Liberty is something that we must continue to strive for. Liberty is something that God has given on the hearts of every man. I don't care who you are, on every woman. I don't care who you are. I don't care where you are. Every person desires to be free. God has given us freedom. As a matter of fact, He has given even freedom to those who are held captive if they will just receive Jesus into their heart. Paul, the Apostle Paul, was held captive and he says, I am a free man. Because God has set me free. And the Bible says, when the Son of God has set you free, you are free indeed, absolutely, undoubtedly. 
You can't argue it. God has set you free. No one, listen to me, no one can bind up someone that Jesus has set free. So our forefathers, when they wrote this stuff, I mean, you read other things they wrote, and you see that it was God working through them. Not only that, but what they established. They established a more perfect union. They, they established this great nation on the principles of God and the guidance of God. And may I tell you that this form of government, listen to me, this form of government, when it is done correctly, works. When it is a government of the people, for the people, by the people, it works. They call this, they call our nation, now, now listen, a quick lesson, we're not a democracy. Does everybody understand that? We are a republic. All right? We're a republic. People want us to be a democracy, but we're, we're a republic. But this works. This is called a great experiment. But I'm here to tell you, this experiment, when it's done correctly, is a good one. Things work well by what those forefathers has established. And not only what they established, but what they foresaw. Do you know that when they were putting all this together, they weren't looking at just right now. They were looking into the future, and that's why they established the Constitution, is they established it for future uh, endeavors, for moving forward, not just staying there in 1776 and 1789, not, not just those, but to go all the way out to well beyond 2020. They established, they foresaw these things. And folks, they're still working today. Can I tell you also that, the, that, that we hear people say that we want to fundamentally change the basis of our nation? Can I tell you, my friends, the only way you can change the fundamental basis of our nation is to change the idea of God. So the fundamental base of our nation does not need to be changed because God worked through our nation. And the base foundation... The fundamental idea of our nation is God is Jehovah. But not just what they foresaw way down in the future that is amazingly still working. That needs to be tweaked a little bit, but the base fundamentals, does, fundamentals do not have to be changed of our nation. As a matter of fact, when they do, get ready. Because you can't change the base fundamental, uh, fundamental basis of our, of our government and our nation without changing the idea of who God is. Because God is great. And this nation was established on the greatness of God. But not only that, but what they sacrificed. Very quickly. What they sacrificed. My friends, listen. Their workings caused them to suffer. They're signing the Declaration of Independence. They did not prosper because of that. As a matter of fact, it cost many of them their lives. But they were willing to sacrifice. My friends, today... We need to be willing to do that same sacrifice to place ourselves where God wants us to be. And then what we are to do, the second thing is we're to pass it down. Look what it says. We will not hide them. What? What's them? We'll not hide them. It's the words of God. We'll not hide the word of God from our children. We will not hide the greatness of God from our children. We will not... We will not blindly keep them from hearing and knowing what God did to establish the nation of Israel. And we as the people need to not take away the rights of our children to hear what we, what we believe God has done for us. We are to pass it down. Now many young people don't want to hear about the past. As a matter of fact, when you begin to talk to your kids about all oh, your past, they all go, oh. Here we go, you're going to start talking about how you had to go to school with 10 feet of snow even in August, and you had to walk uphill both ways because it was such a hard life. And they begin to go, we don't want to hear that. Listen, that's not the history we need to be telling them. The history we need to be telling them is what God has done for us, amen? What, how God has spoken to us. We're to pass it down by what we have seen and heard. That's even scriptural. The Bible tells us, in the book of Luke, chapter 7, verse 22. So he replied to the messengers. Now this is Jesus. He replied, Go back and report to John 
what you have seen and heard. John had sent some, his disciples over to Jesus and said, Hey, you go and you ask Jesus, is he the one? He said, Jesus said, you go back and you tell John what you have seen and heard. You tell him the blind receive sight, the lame walk, those who have leprosy are cleansed, the deaf hear, the dead are raised, and the good news is proclaimed to the poor. He said, man, you go, you go tell them that because that's what they need to hear. My friends, can I tell you today that we as adults, we need to be telling our, our children how great God has been in the United States of America, the things that he's done for us, the, 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 the things that he has blessed us with, and how he has saved us, and he has worked through us. He has made us the, the shining light to all the world, that he has used men and women who are willing to die, lay their lives on the line for us. Man, let us go tell them what, they, what we have seen and what we have heard. Listen, the world does not want us to be telling that. As a matter of fact, the world is trying to get some of that stuff taken out so they kids don't hear that anymore. But they said, you go tell them what you've seen and heard. You go tell them the good workings of God through our nation. You go tell them the greatness of Jesus Christ and how He is the answer to all of our nation's problems if we'll just unify ourselves by following the one true God through Jesus Christ. Man, you go tell them what you've seen and heard. But then He also said, you go tell them what you've experienced. Tell them what you've experienced here. Telling the generation to come the praises of the Lord and His strength and His wonderful works that He has done. Man, go tell them what you've experienced because here's the idea of great testimony is a powerful thing. Amen? Telling people what Jesus Christ did for us. In the book of John chapter 5, verses 18 to 19, we pick up here and this is the idea of the the demon-possessed man who had been rampaging throughout the the, the hills and the cemeteries and tearing things up and cutting himself. And people were so afraid of him. And Jesus went. And we see that in in that text, he he healed the man. And he saved the man. And when the people came and, and saw him, they were amazed at the change that Jesus had brought to them. Now, when Jesus was about to get on the boat, this is where this scripture picks up. John chapter 5, verses 18 and 19 says, And when he got in the boat, He who had been demon-possessed begged him, Jesus, that he might be with him. However, Jesus did not permit him, but said to him, Go home to your friends and tell them, listen, tell them what great things the Lord has done for you and how he has compassion on you. He said, man, I I don't want you to go with me because this guy said, look, I'll be your opening act, man. I'll be, I'll, t- I'll be the testimony person. Before you come up to speak, I will be the one to tell them how great you are. Jesus said, no, I don't want you doing that. What I want you to do is I want you to go home and I want you to tell your, friend, your friends and your family what I did for you. Tell them what God has done. My friends, our kids need to be hearing from us what God has done for our nation. He needs to hear from us what God has done for us. He needs to hear what God has done for us as a family, what God has done for us as individuals, what He's done for us as a church. He said, you be the testimony. Listen, there's a whole lot of people getting on, uh, on social media today and they're telling a whole lot of stuff. Amen? They're giving their opinions on anything and everything. And there are arguments going on that just blow my mind. Even from those in the church. Can I tell you, and I've said it before, that nobody needs to hear your opinion on anything. What they need to hear is what God said about it. They need to hear from you what what God has done for you. They need to hear that, that, that God has healed you, that God has saved you, that God has transformed you, that God is working through you. Man, there's a lot of complaining going on. There's a whole lot of opinion giving going on. But man, there needs to be some more testimony going on, amen, about how good God is and what God has done in our lives. I'm telling you, that's what God has told us. He didn't, tell, he didn't say, go back and tell John what you think. He didn't tell the demon possessed man, go back there and tell them what you think. He says, you go tell them what I've done. You go tell them what you've seen. You go tell them what you've heard. You go tell them what you've experienced because that's what they need to hear. That's going to transform their lives. Your opinions don't mean squat. That's why I tried to... Man, I even prayed again. I told you, I prayed up here. God, please don't let me just stand up here and give my opinion all day because I can give you opinions if that's what you really want. Well, no, I'm not. Even if that's what you want, I'm not going to give you my opinions up here. 
All I want to do is testify to you the greatness of God. I want to celebrate greatness today. How about you? How about y'all at home? Y'all want to celebrate greatness today? Man, let's celebrate the greatness of our country. But let's do it by celebrating the greatness of our God who has worked and blessed our nation like he has no other. Man, let's celebrate the risen Savior today who has transformed our lives. Let's celebrate Jesus Christ who gives us hope for a future. Let's celebrate Jesus Christ who gives us hope if we've lost loved ones that one day we're going to get to be with them again. Let's celebrate the peace that we can have through these turbulent times. Man, let's celebrate greatness by celebrating Jesus. How about that? Well, that'd be a good place, Southern Baptist, for some amen and going on right there, huh? Let the people at home here, boy, they're getting excited at First Baptist West. I need to go there next week. Amen? Because God is great. And to stop talking about the greatness of our nation, uh, I said last week, to stop talking about the greatness of our nation is to stop talking about the greatness of God because our nation is only great because of God. Do you know the greatness of God in your life today? Do you at home know the greatness of God in your life this morning? If not, I mean, you have an opportunity right here, right now to just call upon the name of the Lord. Say, Lord, I'm feeling empty today. I feel like the sin has just been dragging me down. But this morning I come to you. I ask you to forgive me of my sin. I claim Jesus as the Son of God, and I want to receive him into my life. God, I want to do that right here, right now. Would you do that this morning? Right there where at home or right here sitting in this congregation, would you do that today? Man, you can be saved today. You can experience the greatness of God and not just hear me talk about it, but you can ex experience it for yourself Would you come today. Maybe you're here, maybe you're at home and you're, you're saying, Pastor, I know I'm saved. But man, I've been kind of getting off track a little bit. I've begun to focus on my own self, my own opinions, my own heart. Others' feelings, others' hearts. And Pastor, today, man, I, I, I need to come back to Christ. I need to put Him back in the center of my life. Man, you can do that today. Oh, just by praying, God, forgive me for turning away from You. God, restore back to me the joy of Your salvation so that my life can have hope. My life can have meaning again. My, hope, my life can have direction again. God, show this to me today. And then begin to pray for our nation that God can heal it. Man, can I tell you, and I'm done right here, can I tell you beyond a shadow of a doubt that if our nation would turn to God and receive Christ and follow after Him and heed His words, can I tell you today, our nation would be healed. Whew! Our nation would be healed today. Just turn to Him. So let's begin to pray that. And let's celebrate greatness. But if God's speaking to your heart, turn to Him today. I'm going to ask our praise team to come back up here, and we're going to enter into a moment of praise and worship again. And through this time, we're going to be able uh, to pray. If God need, is calling upon you today would, to receive Him in your life, just pray, man. Don't, don't turn away. Pray today to receive Him into your life. If God has called you back into a fellowship with Him to restore fellowship, would you come today? Man, I'll be down here. I'll be praying for you, praying with you. Maybe you just need to come and pray for our nation. Maybe we as a church need to fall on our knees before God and pray for this great nation. But we're going to do that today. Let me lead you in prayer. And if those are at home, man, you can pray. And if you need someone to talk to, call our church office right now. And we'll have people there that will be able to visit with you. If you'll just, if you'll just call. Father, in the name of Jesus, we come to you and we thank you for your love and your grace. Thank you for your healing power that you give each one of us. Lord, I pray for this, this next few moments as we sing this song. God, you would inhabit your praise as we lift it up to you. But I pray, Father, if there's someone here or someone watching, Lord, that doesn't know you as their Savior, that they could turn right now to you, Father, and receive you. And, Father, we'll give you praise for all that takes place in the next few moments. It's in the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. Would you stand with me? Let's get back into some praise and worship.